I love gaming accessories and peripherals as much as the next nerd. I love it even more when a quality product comes with a cheap price tag. Even though a lot of times I tend to go for the cheap price tag more than the quality product, I just like it when they come together. That's why I picked up a couple gaming mechanical keyboards recently, and I got some opinions on both of them. First, I picked up the Havit, an open box returned to Amazon. I picked up the Havit Game Note. Now, this keyboard actually was pretty great, and I'll get back to that in a moment. But I also picked up the Red Dragon Yama. This thing has so many features, but they're both comparable. Both of these keyboards have comparable specs and price. The Yama has a little bit more going on, and new is about $10 more than the Havit keyboard. However, it seems that other people have had problems or dislike the Havoc keyboard a little more than they did the Red Dragon. Now I swear by Amazon warehouse deals. A lot of times you can get the same product, almost new condition for $20, $30. Sometimes I've even seen 30% off. It's crazy. So I always buy an Amazon warehouse deal when I can. Sometimes that works out in my favor and sometimes that doesn't. And I don't know if that's the reason why I have the issues that I've been having with the Havoc keyboard or not, but I do have to let you know that I did buy the Havoc keyboard as a warehouse deal for about $40, and I bought the Red Dragon keyboard full price because there were no warehouse deals. I would have purchased the Red Dragon keyboard had it been a warehouse deal, but I couldn't. Now, that being said, let's get on to the actual product. <clears throat> the Havoc Game Note keyboard is great. It has a lot of the features you could really ask for in any mechanical keyboard. It has blue Otemu switches, which I found very nice and clicky. However, my big issue with the keyboard wasn't with the clickiness of the keys, but that it sounds like a damn gong every time you hit any of the keys. This isn't me smacking on this keyboard. When you're playing games, you're hitting this a lot louder than that. And I wonder if we can get this. Do you hear that ringing out? I had to insert foam into this guy with no luck. It still sounds like a gong. It sounds better, but oh my lord, you should have heard it without anything in here to try to calm it down. That's why I went looking for a second keyboard and I came up with the Red Dragon. Now I have a few prerequisites when it comes to buying a mechanical keyboard for myself. One, it has to have the numpad. Two, I need a scroll volume wheel. And three, I need macro keys, G keys on the side or somewhere on the board so that I can set up a few macros for myself. Other than that, there's not a lot that I asked for. Now I do wanna preface this a little bit by saying that I am biased towards brown keys. I like the middle ground that gives you between a really loud blue and a just straight through red. It's not as loud. I do my work at my desk as well as gaming. So I like that middle ground where I can hit all the keys and they, they do what I want. With a blue keyboard, it seems like sometimes I'm a little bit too fast with the keys and the actuation doesn't quite hit when I would expect it to. So normally I go for a brown style key, which is why when I got this thing, I actually really loved it. I don't mind the clickiness, but I do have some issues with it not actuating when I feel like it probably should, but that could be on me. I don't wanna blame the keyboard for my failing. This also came with a nice rest. I'm not gonna put it back on. And the keyboards are very, very similar in that they're about the same size. They both are made out of metal, but this keyboard just sounds so bad. I can hear the gong behind headphones and the clickiness is one thing and maybe a little bit of a gong sound, a little bit of a noise ringing out in the metal is, is one thing, but this thing just is incessant. That's why I have to return it and that's why I went looking for the Red Dragon keyboard. Otherwise, some of the other features on this keyboard are incredible. The RGB styles look so good. It's very bright and you can see them across the room or you can tone it down a bit. I'm a bit of an RGB whore. I got it all over. My stupid mouse pad has RP. Damn, RPG? Why don't we just all play, you know, Final Fantasy? I don't know. The gaudier the better. That's what I say. I don't care. You know, you can look at me however you want, but I like. Point being that this thing has so many cool little features that I found myself not wanting to get rid of it. I love the feel of the blue Otemu switches. 
I feel like it's a solid keyboard. It's a little light, but that's okay. It doesn't move around. The memory keys are fun. I was able to set up a few RGB preferences that I just, I couldn't help but uh, enjoy doing. I set up a little heart for February, set up a Christmas tree for December, and I set up a big old bulging Now let's take a listen to the Have It Game Note. You can definitely hear that ringing out on this keyboard so much more. It's infuriating. Comparatively speaking, we are expecting the Havoc game note to be much louder than the Red Dragon K550 Yama. That's not what we're arguing here. It's obvious that a blue switch is going to be louder than a brown-like switch, but the ringing of the metal is where we're having the problems with this keyboard. It rings out, it sounds hollow, and it just sounds like a gong every time you hit a key. Let's see how the Red Dragon K550 Yama sounds when typing. You can hear the metal ringing out on the Red Dragon K550 Yama, just like on the Havit game note, but it's nowhere near as intrusive. Just a couple other things to note is that the Red Dragon has two USBs with USB pass through, and the Havit has one. Although the Havit has two extra USBs in the back, they're not powerful enough to actually run them both simultaneously with anything that takes any real power. The bad thing for the Red Dragon here is that the stands are nowhere near as good as the Havit stands. I'm not sure why Red Dragon chose to break the mold here. Don't fix what's not broken. I would have preferred a much more sturdy kickstand. Not to mention the Red Dragon website is much easier to navigate. Take a look here. We just search Red Dragon, click it, takes us right to their homepage, which is very easy to understand. Click downloads, and we're on a page that has a picture of each product that they support. Look at there, K550. We understand what we're doing. We save the file, we install the app. For Havit, check this out. We go to Havit's website, we go to their downloads, which is pretty easy to find, but look at this list. It's a list of model numbers, and the model number doesn't even match really to the one that I got in the package. I don't know, coming right from a Google Drive? It just doesn't feel as professional or as refined as Red Dragon. And the Red Dragon software itself is clean, simple to use, and it has all of the features you would expect out of a gaming keyboard. You can change the RGB, you can add macros just the basics and it works i'm sorry i forgot to get the footage of the Havit software before i returned it because i needed to get it in before i don't know i got stop making excuses it just doesn't work as well in fact when i was using it the software just didn't allow me to click the buttons i had to uninstall and reinstall a couple times and finally it did work so you may have a little bit of problems there so for my money what am i buying the Red Dragon K550 Yama or the Havit Game Note. I think it's pretty obvious if you've been watching the video what I'm going to choose and it's going to be the Red Dragon K550 even though I paid much more for it because of the Amazon warehouse deal thing. It's just an all around better built keyboard with better support. Havit's great and I love the blue keys. They feel good but the sound is just 
irredeemable in my book. You hit, will not read anything about this in any of the reviews. But, you know, take that with a grain of salt. I did get this Amazon warehouse, so it could be something wrong with it, and that's why it was returned. It does have a model number that doesn't match the Have It website. However, again, the Have It website has no instructions on this specific keyboard. They have a different model number as we talked about. So while it's great, it feels pretty good. It's got everything I wanted, especially the G keys. It just doesn't take the cake in this battle. The Red Dragon K550 Yama. I'll be plugging this bad boy in for the foreseeable future. I like it and it's great. Now I do have to point out one caveat. The first one I received was causing blue screens and USB malfunctions on my computer over and over and over again. I do also have to say it's possible that was coming from somewhere else, but the issue has not represented itself after unplugging the Red Dragon K550 that I had before picking this one up. This is a replacement. Hey, could have been luck of the draw, but I wanted to point it out. Well, Murphys, I went on the Amazon and I picked up one of them Turbo Power subscribe buttons. I just gotta figure out how to get it installed so these these people, these nice people, can can use it. Let me just try this right now. Oh, oh, now look what you got done! Oh shucks! Uh. <laughs> Don't laugh. Just subscribe.